Hey guys and welcome back to another Tasty Blender 2.82 tutorial. Today we are doing something a bit different. My sister, who is a very talented animator and graphic designer, I will put her links down below, gave me the idea of making a flag that you can put your own image texture to. This is meant for designers who have no previous 3D experience and then want to make something of their own. We'll model everything from scratch, I'll show you how to use the physics, we'll set up the materials, and we'll also go through a couple of render settings and how to render out your animation. I'll be providing a free Blender source file with this video, so if you want to learn just how to put your own image texture into the flag and render it out, just follow the timestamp below. Now, let's get into it. We are going to open up Blender 2.82. Now, press A twice because we have to delete everything. Then press X and click Delete. Now we're going to make our flag. So press 1 to get into front view on your numpad, then press Shift A Mesh Plane. We're going to rotate the plane by pressing R, X, and then we're going to hold Control and slide our mouse to 90 degrees. You can also change your rotation by pressing N and then Rotation X in your Transform sidebar. Let's scroll in and we see a plane. Now we're going to make this into a flag form. We're going to press S, X, hold control, and then slide your mouse, let's say to about a scale of 1.5. The scale is shown in your left corner. This is good enough for what we need. Now we're going to press tab so we can enter into edit mode. We're going to press control R together and we're going to slide it so we get this line. If you scroll with your mouse, let's say four times, we get four cuts. We're going to left click and then right click again immediately so we can put in our cuts. We're going to do this same thing again, so control R and then scroll again, so let's say three cuts. So we have nice little squares. Now, before we move on, we're going to right click. So we're going to select the vertices. We're going to hold shift and we're going to select the three vertices on the left side. We're going to go on our right side here into object data properties into this green triangle. And we're going to add a vertex group. Double click and change the name to flag and then click assign. This means that these three are now in their separate group. Why is this useful? Well, because we're going to need it for our flag. We're going to go into this wrench modifier properties over here, add a modifier. We're going to add a subdivision modifier and we're going to change it to simple. Viewport, let's say, let's keep everything at one right now. After that, we're going to go into physics properties and we're going to add a cloth. Now, this might seem very complex, but we just have to scroll down, go into shape, click on pin group and flag. This means that now the flag is pinned where you have those three points that we chose earlier. We go also into collisions and we click on self collisions. We can lower the distance to about 0.01, seems okay. Now, before we do anything, we're just gonna quickly test if everything is working fine. So if you press play animation, we get this. So if you look around, you can see. Now it doesn't look like a flag, but we're gonna make it look and behave like one. So first of all, we're gonna increase the render and viewport subdivisions so we have more vertices to work with. Now it's getting there slowly. But again, we have these very, let's say, ugly squares over here, but we can fix that by adding another subdivision modifier after the cloth and just viewport to two. And now we get this smooth flag. However, we can smooth it even further by just pressing W and shade smooth. You can also press space and shade smooth like that. Now we get our flag. This, this is going to be our flag, our flag object. Okay, so we're just going to rename it here to flag, double click on that object. 
Now we have to use force. Again, very easy. Shift A, we're gonna add a force field and we're gonna add wind. You'll get this. Now, before we do anything, we're just going to press R and then Y. So we rotate it on the Y axis, hold control, and then slide your mouse down to about, let's say 45 degrees. Yeah, to a 45 degree angle. Again, if you don't want to do it like that, you can always change it here in your sidebar. Now we're gonna press G and Z, and this is going to move it down on the Z axis. We're gonna press G again and slide it on the X axis. So G is for moving around, S is for scaling, R is for rotation. Now we have this. We can check what's happening with our force, our physics force in our physics properties over here. So we have them here. Now, if we press play, mm, let's say nothing, nothing extraordinary is happening. We have to increase the force, the strength of our wind. So let's increase it to say about a hundred. And let's see what that does. So it's starting to affect it, but we have to put much more force. Again, let's put a thousand. Now we have a nice flag that's like turning in the wind. So we can leave it at that, we can leave it at a thousand, it seems fine. You can also change the position of your wind if you'd like to, to get a different effect. That's it about our physics and our modeling. That's enough. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply our texture. We're gonna go into this right corner over here and click with our left click and then slide it to the left. This is going to divide our screen. Now we click in this icon over here on the top left corner of our right screen and we're going to choose Shader Editor. Press N so the sidebar disappears now we don't have anything here, but we can choose our object with our right click over here, new, and we get our material. We won't go into details too much. We're just gonna choose this viewport shading icon over here so we can see a bit better what's happening. We're gonna just select the principal BSDF with our left click, press Ctrl T, and this should give you a texture coordinate node, a mapping node, and a image texture. We can also say, increase the size of it. If the control T doesn't work, it means you don't have a specific add-on open. We can do that also in a different way by pressing Shift A and just use the search function. So we're gonna search for the texture coordinate node. We're gonna put it, say, over here. We're gonna search for the mapping node this is going to come over here and we're going to search for the image texture and we're going to put it over here. Now we can connect the generated to our vector input, our vector output of the mapping node to the vector input of the image texture and the color to the base color. This means that whatever texture you have, you can put it into the image texture node and it's going to show on your map. Now, let's try this out. I'm gonna just open and I'm gonna choose, let's say, just a random picture. Nice clouds over here. We can see in our viewport that the clouds are distributed. So if you have a specific dimension of your texture and you want to keep the dimension the same, you can also influence the scale of your image texture in the mapping node specifically scale. So you have X, so for the X axis, Y for the Y axis, and Z for the Z axis. In this case, it doesn't do much. You can also rotate your image texture if you need, it to, if you need to rotate it uh, on the X, Y, and Z axis, and also the location. So if you have any trouble inputting your image texture, you can use these very easily to get the same dimensions as you have in your original file. Let's get back to the start of our animation by clicking this button over here. Let's press play again. We're just gonna see how 
our texture behaves on the flag. You can see it works completely fine. Let's choose, say, a frame where we have like really nice folds, like let's say this one. We can see it's folding very nicely. Now, the only thing remaining is the lighting and the camera. Now, how are we going to do this? We're first going to join these two back. So we're going to press in the left corner with a left click and drag to the right. So we have our screen back. Now press Shift A and add a camera. You can find it here at the bottom. We're going to press zero or on your numpad, or if you'd like to, you also have cameras or viewpoint. You have it in your view bar over here and you can select camera. So this is going to put you into your camera. We're going to press G and we're going to press Y and drag out our camera. So it looks like this. If we press play, we can see the flag is playing in our camera. Now it's time to set up the lighting. So in the example that I was shown, the lighting wasn't extremely realistic, it was mostly like a very basic type of lighting in the contemporary sense. So what we are going to do is we're just going to add a simple sun lamp and then rotate it around so we can find something that we like. Well, we do that by pressing Shift A, we're going to add a light and we're going to add sun. Now it's pointing directly down and we also don't see what's happening because we're still in our viewport shading. If we click this icon, which is rendered view, we get this. This doesn't look very good because we have to click on render properties over here on the right. In the render engine, let's choose cycles and we're gonna choose GPU in my case. You can choose CPU in your case if you don't have a strong enough GPU. Good. We are going to now rotate our sun object by pressing R and then X means that it's going to turn on the X axis or Y on the Y axis or Z on the Z axis. For now, the best say, course of action would be R, let's press Y and then rotate it by 45 degrees and then R again, Z and let's rotate it, find, let's say find somewhere where you like it. So yeah, and then left click to select the rotation. We also have to go down into the world properties, this red little world icon, and change the strength to zero. Now we are doing this because we are going to create a transparent file. So basically you can put this animation without the background into any program you'd like to. So how do we do that? We're basically gonna go back to render properties. We're gonna click on film and choose transparent. So now everything that's going to render out is going to be just the flag. We select again the sun or yeah, the sun is already selected. We can go into this lamp icon over here and play around with the settings. I think raising the strength a bit to about two seems fine. You can also play with the angle if you want to have, let's say, softer shadows or stronger shadows, but I think like an angle of 90 degrees, it's completely fine. You can again try and rotate your sun lamp to find a good spot or somewhere where you're happy with it, like so. And that's basically it for lighting. Now I have to take care of a couple of details. We're going to increase the render samples to let's say 150 seems fine. Light pass, we're gonna leave it as is. Film, we're gonna close it down. Color management, now we can choose our look. Here we're gonna click on medium high contrast. You can also try high contrast or very high contrast if you'd like to. Exposure, it's self-explanatory. And gamma, again, is self-explanatory. If you look around by pressing on your middle mouse and then just holding it down and looking around, 
press zero on your notepad again to return to your camera, you can see we have a nice flag animation. The final thing we have to do now is export. So how do you do that in Blender? Well, it's extremely easy. You just go into output properties. You can change the resolution of your camera or rather of your file by changing the resolution of X, Y. You can choose your frame rate, frame step, but for now you don't have to worry about it. Frame rate, we're gonna, let's say, change it to 25 or 30, whatever you'd like. You have the output options over here. I usually use RGBA, especially in this case, because we have a transparent background, color depth of 16 and compression. I usually put it to 100% for PNG. Now, in your output, you click the folder, you select the folder that you'd like to have your image sequence rendered to. And I say image sequence because it's safer to export in an image sequence rather than a MP4 or AV, JPEG or whatever video file, because if something interrupts your render in the middle of rendering, then you lose your whole file. Choose a folder where your image sequence is going to be, and then you can import it into another program. And that's... But before we do anything else, we have to again select our flag. We're going to go back into our physics properties and we have to bake our animation. And we do that here by clicking on cache. We have simulation start and end. So we have from 1 to 250 and we press bake. So we can see that we have a couple of points where our flag clips out of our camera view. That's nothing to worry about. You just right click on your camera or left click choose it in the right of your screen and then press G, Z and lower it down like so. We can check again. This is how it looks like. You can also press G and Y and move out a bit, scroll out a bit of it and again manipulate the camera on those three axes. And I usually do that because you get a bit more precise movement out of it. We can still see there's a bit of clipping right over here. So just G, Y, scroll out a bit, and that's it. And now we have our flag ready and set. Before we do the final render, we're going to do one last thing. We're going to choose this icon in the top left, Editor. We're going to choose Compositor. Let's press N so the sidebar disappears and click on this and click on Use Nodes. And we get these two nodes over here. We want to set up a denoiser so you can render out with less samples and have a quicker render. How we do that, we're gonna jump into our view layer properties, which is these, which is this photo icon over here. Click on denoising data, and now we get this. Get all of these options. Shift A, search denoise, and then Put it right in between those. We're going to connect the noise image to the image, denoising normal to the denoising normal, and denoising albedo to albedo. The last thing to do is just press Ctrl F12, and that's it. So hopefully you found this tutorial useful, especially for beginner designers who have no prior experience in Blender. Hopefully it was easy to follow. Leave your comments below. I always appreciate those. They help me improve my tutorials and really help me connect with you guys. So I really appreciate those. In any case, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.